Men's team does it again. Down to the wire with another conference win. We'll take you to the Leah Chorus Center. Plus, women's hoops at home and a major fencing tournament on campus. Owl Sports Update is live for the first time in 2022, starting right now. Hello and welcome to a new semester of Owl Sports Update. Alongside Josh Safran, I'm Luke Milai, and this new anchor duo is here to bring you everything Temple Sports for the spring season. Yeah, now just the first show for this anchor duo, for the women's hoops team, the duo of Davis and Cardoza play their 128th game together, this time against Cincinnati. Temple looking to sweep the season series with Cincy, this time in Pearson, and who else but Mia Davis driving in, and she gets a layup early in this one. Entering this game 70 points away from Temple's all-time points leader, but on the other side, Akira Levy doesn't care about records, just buckets. Cincy went 5 of 7 from behind the arc and route to a 36 to 28 lead in the first half. But now in the second half, Jaysha Clinton dips in, strokes two. She finished with 15 as the Owls marched all the way back to take a one-point lead. However, Jillian Hayes, pure from mid-range to vault the Bearcats back in front with a minute left. But Giselle Thomas, pump fake, Euro, Owls take the lead. The Bearcats would have one last shot to tie it, but it's absolutely wild. Temple with a gutsy comeback from down 15 to beat Cincy 68 to 64. I like how our guys fought. You know, even when we're down 15 and we have Mia and Lex on the bench in foul trouble, um, we have a bunch of young guys out there. I thought we were, we kept our composure. We chipped away at it. We made a lot of hustle plays. There was just a feeling that we knew there was no way we were going to lose this game. At no point did I think we were going to lose. We were in halftime. Everybody was in it. Everybody was saying, we got it. We got it. And just the way that we stayed together, there was no way we were going to lose. A 15-point comeback, a 4-1 and one conference record, and a graduate captain on the verge of a program record. Sounds to me like it's time to bring in Owl Sports Update's Eric Jesperger to crunch some numbers on Mia Davis. So, Eric, in what game do you expect Mia to break the all-time Temple points record? Thanks, Josh. Mia Davis is 49 points away from passing the Temple women's basketball all-time scoring record. Using her points per game average and scoring as of late, I've done the math and can tell you when, in fact, Davis can capture the scoring title. Mia Davis has racked up her normal 19 points per game average this season, but her last five games, she has outdone herself, scoring an average of 22 points. While you can bet that Davis will break the record given she stays healthy, the real question is, can she get it on the Owls' three-game home stretch, which all depends on how she does on the road this weekend. Davis will face some tough opponents in Memphis and UCF, historically some of her hardest games. UCF hasn't allowed an opposing player to score more than 20 points in a home game this season. Davis only needs a hair over a 16-point average each game to break the record at home against Wichita, but she only crosses that threshold about 33% of the time. I expect Davis to do it and be 10 to 15 points off from eclipsing Marilyn Stevens heading into the homestand. Want to witness Temple history? Clear your schedules for February 2nd when Davis and the Owls host Wichita State. Gentlemen, back to you at the desk. One night earlier, same schools, same city, same huge comeback. Zach Hicks started things off with a bang and and won three. Just one of three triples in the game for Temple. Later in the half, it's Jeremiah Williams flexing his muscles, but he wasn't done there, adding on to his 15-point night. But stop me if you've heard this one before. It's Dame time at the end of another close game. First, the long jumper with a foot on the line to cut the lead to one. After the Owls trailed by as many as 14, 
Then it's done again in the paint, putting up the short jumper to put the Owls ahead for good. Temple wins it 61 to 58. Got ourselves together. I thought we did a, a fantastic job of, of guarding them and guarding their best players. And we just took away what those guys, you know, strength was. And that was, you know, shooting the three ball. They made some. Um, there were some tough threes that they made, but, you know, we were, we were there, we contested, and we just made it difficult for them. I've become, you know, so comfortable, and it's all due to the trust and respect of my teammates. I think they believe in me to, you know, to have the ball in my hands and make big plays. That marks the Owls' fourth consecutive win, and all of those wins have come in conference play. Temple hasn't won four straight conference games since the 2018-2019 season, and this year they're doing it all with their star player forced to watch from the bench. But be careful, for Califf Battle being off the court does not mean being away from the game. Califf Battle started the season looking like a program-changing player, one of the top scorers in the country at 21 points per game. A broken bone in his foot has changed the goals he set for himself this season. I mean, I'm kind of addicted to basketball, so I'm kind of different from everybody else. I sleep with a basketball. I've been sleeping with a basketball all my life. You know, I, I kind of like, if basketball was a girlfriend, I would have already married her. And that's why he can't seem to get off the court. From the scooter, from the floor, or from the three-point line. Battle hasn't really left the court, and he wants everyone to know it. I mean, well, the same day, same day they told me I broke it, I was taking a shot to it. He's, he, he's the guy, uh, Josh, that you got to tell, yo, get out the gym. Fans who get to home games early may be able to see battle practice what he preaches, and the rest of the team is following suit as they've won six of their last nine since battle's gone down. And Dunn is averaging seven more points per game, while battle's two roommates, Jordan and Zach Hicks, are averaging six more points per game. I'll talk to the guys just like I'm on the court, and they, honestly, they come up to me on the bench and ask, like, what could I have done here? What could I have asked everybody? As soon as they come back to the bench, they always come back to me and ask me for advice. He's been a coach on the bench. I mean, he's been really active in huddles, um, you know, when he has been present in games. So he, he's been doing a terrific job of controlling what he can control. Sometimes we got to tell him, like, listen, Kay, this is my job. I'm the assistant coach. You're not the assistant right now. Caleb being so into it, like, it pushes everyone even more. It's like, mm -hmm. we got to do this for him and be ready, you know, keep the keep the house built and ready for when he comes back too, so. There isn't tournament talk on broad quite yet, but the Owls are heading to SMU this Saturday, and a win in Texas will go a long way in terms of keeping the house built, as Nick Jourdain put it. Break time, but when we come back, about 20 fencing teams descend on our fair city for the Philadelphia Invitational. How do you think these teams get their swords through security at Philly International? We've also got one Temple team using the Fountain of Youth to achieve lofty goals. No metal detector needed. Owl Sports Update is back in 90 seconds. Welcome back to Owl Sports Update. The strip is cooking and I'm not talking about steak. The fencing team season is underway following a pair of local dates in the Philadelphia Invitational. The Owls won four of their seven matchups, headlined by the same bloodline. Yeah, that's right. Let's take a look at the Novo Seltseva sisters. The eldest of the two, Elizabeth, came to Broad last season where she immediately made her mark as one of the six fencers Temple sent to the NCAA Championships. This year, her younger sister Anna joined the program, and she's off to a great start, too. In the Philadelphia Invitational, Elizabeth posted a 7-2 record in foil, but Luke, anything you can do, I could do better. As Anna went 7-1 at the Invitational, also for foil, had one upper. The Owls leave the nest in February, flying from Illinois to North Carolina and to Utah, facing more than 20 different opponents in that span. Anna and Elizabeth were just two of many Owls who were very busy this past weekend. In all, Temple faced three national powers as the Philadelphia Invitational. Owl Sports Update's Vic Ragapathy was there. For one weekend, Philadelphia was the epicenter of collegiate fencing. More than 20 schools from around the country came to town for the Philadelphia Invitational. We started the Philly Invitational several years ago. Three, uh, the coach at Penn at that time, uh, myself and the coach at Haverford at that time. For Owl Spencers like sophomore Margarita Calderaro, it's comforting to be competing at home in such a big event so early in the season. A lot of the team feels like anxious when it comes to competing, but having a home meet puts us a little bit at ease knowing we know the environment, we know the people who are watching.
we just like want to let the other teams know that like we're not scared of them like we've always been that loud and like supportive of each other in any environment there is of temple's 19 fencers only six are upperclassmen so the philly invitational is a critical lesson in how to fence against nationally ranked collegiate teams I see them becoming more comfortable working together. So I'm pleased with the progress that we're making. We're not where we need to be or where we can be yet, but we're moving in the right direction. The Owls won't be at home again until late February when they'll host the Temple Invitational. From TU Pavilion, Vic Raghupathi, Owl Sports Update. From home cooking to road warriors, the Owls traveled north for a tri-meet with New Hampshire and Penn. The Owls scored a season high, good enough to take down the Quakers, but not enough to beat the Wildcats, a fellow member of the Eagle Conference. Hannah Stallings led the way with a career-high performance and her third straight all-around victory. Last season ended in heartbreak when the gymnastics squad had to pull out of the NCAA regionals due to COVID. This year, the team is relying on a predominantly freshman core to fulfill their high expectations. Owl Sports Update's Matt Aquino has more. It was a year of first in spring of 2021. Temple's first Eagle title in his first year in the conference and the team's first berth in the NCAA regional. Of course, the Owls never made the trip thanks to COVID, but one year later, those goals are on repeat. This year, the Owls will try to repeat with many new faces joining the team. Eight freshmen, the most of any class, will look to help the Owls reach this goal. There are things you have to learn as a freshman, um, but really good freshmen become really good upperclassmen. So I'm excited about it. Freshmen Anna Hall, Madison Durunda, and Hannah Stallings have already made an immediate impact. The Owls upset 23rd ranked Iowa State on January 15th. I think our group of freshmen bring a lot to the table. We're really talented, so I think this year the team is already just a lot stronger than they were last year. Which leads the Owls back to their goal of making it to the NCAA Regionals. I heard that it was very devastating that they did put a lot of work in last year and to just see all of it just go away. <laughs> yeah, I kept up with the team a lot last year specifically through um, like social media, so I was updated on that they went eagle, and so I was super excited to come to the team that was on the ride and doing so well. The freshman corps will continue to contribute when the women's gymnastics team travels to Brooklyn, New York to face LIU to continue their title defense. This is Matthew Aquino reporting for Owl Sports Update. The gymnastics program is off to a much better start in 2022. Building off of its success from the end of last season, the Owls were winless in their first 13 matches of 2021, but finished the year winning nine of their last 10. One season after pulling out of NCAA regionals due to COVID, the Owls sit at three and two. This includes a win over 23rd ranked Iowa State, their first victory over a Big 12 opponent in program history. We're up against our final break of the show, but when we're back, Tennis is back on the court. We'll have highlights from the season opener against VCU on the other side. Some racket sports and some schedules, both coming up when Owl Sports Update returns. Owl Sports Update. A trip down to Virginia did not go as planned for the women's tennis team. The Owls were missing one of their starters and were forced to switch around their doubles pairs. It was apparent as the team went 0-3 in their doubles matches. The team fared better in singles, with Jamie Way and Veronica Kolhava picking up the only two points for the Cherry and White. The Owls finished on the losing end 5-2. The team will look to bounce back next Friday against St. Francis. Over on the men's side, coming off of a season-opening loss to VCU, the Owls look to get in the win column against Penn in their black uniforms. Doubles competition was not kind to the Cherry and White, as the Quakers swept Temple 3-0. Temple found limited success in singles play, where the Owls got their only point of the night. Temple has won just two out of 12 singles matches they've played in their first two meets. Penn wins this one by a final of 6-1, dropping the Owls to 0-2 on the season. The men's tennis team has missed the last two conference tournaments due to COVID. However, with a strong French contingency and three freshmen, the team will be looking to make up for missed opportunities. Owl Sports Update's Jesse dimitch Louvet has more. It's 2022, but eight months after Temple Tennis ended its spring season, suddenly and unexpectedly thanks to COVID, the pain is still there. It was very disappointing. Uh, we worked really hard and we were having actually a great year last year, uh, so it was disappointing the way it ended. 
down in Florida, the Owls ran into COVID on their own team, and their season ended with an 11-5 and record and no chance to play for a title. Actually, I've never played any conference tournament because the first year, uh, COVID again, and last year, unfortunately, COVID again, we couldn't play. So that will be hopefully my first conference tournament as a junior. It's real. <laughs> and that's where the Owls are heading this spring with six returners and four newcomers. But not one player on this roster has played in the conference tournament. It's just the goal and win the championship. Uh, I think we have a good chance this year. In his 17th year, Coach Morrow and his players have the same goal, not only playing in the AAC championships, but winning it. Something they thought they had a chance of doing last spring. I hope we're gonna do something big uh, for the team, for the coach. Coach wants us, like, he really wants us to, to, to win the conference. While the Owls have confidence, they are the underdogs with conference powers Central Florida, Southern Florida, and Tulane all vying for the title. Reporting from the Student Pavilion, I'm Justin Mitchell Bay, Owl Sports Update. That'll do it for us on this edition of Owl Sports Update. But don't worry, you can follow along with all of our shows and content on social media at Owl Sports Update. And look for our hoop show on Friday on social, courts in session at noon if you follow us on at Owl Sports Update. Ray Dunn, Sage Hurley, they do a fantastic job. I can't wait to see what they have next. I'm Josh Safran. We will see you soon. And of course, he is Luke Nilak.